got to keep things moving forward and we've got to bring back the element of theatre to a performance. Uh, but at the same time, is everyone being part of the show? Before Slow Ty would release his breakthrough album, Nothing Great About Britain, and announce himself as the new bad boy of the British rap scene. Like my biggest accomplishment yeah, yeah, is yeah. this album. Yeah, yeah. Is that true? Yeah. yeah. How weird is that? Apart from winning the egg and spoon race. So. <laughs> Before Slow Tie would boast several high-end collaborations with the likes of Denzel Curry, Skepta, and ASAP Rocky. Before Slow Tie would have 123,000 followers on Twitter, 512,000 followers on Instagram, and over 316,000 subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. Slow Tie is a type of rapper who prides himself on his ability to tell a story through his music, and over the last couple of years, he's thrown his home nation of Britain under his microscope, finding it to be a country of people chock full of problems similar to his own. As a young man, he was forced to live in community housing, spent too much time drinking, got beat on by an abusive stepfather, and stole things just to escape the boredom. No matter what troubles I've gone through, the people that always remain with me and stay by me and make my life easier and happier is my family and my friends. And this 24 year old built himself a cult like following off the back of two spectacular EPs 2017's I Wish I Knew and 2018's Run, not to mention a whole slew of sold out local gigs. But if your only exposure to him has been through website headlines, then you likely don't know the real slow tie at all because his antics often overshadow his talent. Like that time he chose to perform live at the Mercury Prize ceremony while waving the fake severed head of UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Yeah, that really happened. This guy has some balls, bro. That was amazing. But that's like a metaphor, isn't it? I yeah. think people always want to jump the gun and be quick to say, oh, that like people started saying it's like terrorism. Despite his cheeky antics, Slow Tie raps about subject matter that is both personal and universal, making him one of the most authentic voices in the world of hip hop today. Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Marlon Palmer, back at it again with a brand new video. This one taking a look at the life and times of UK rapper Slow Tie, prior to fame here for you on Before They're Famous. Now a lot of us here at the show are waiting on pins and needles for his newest album, Tyrant, to drop later this month. So what better time than now to take a look back at his come up? Be sure to let us know what you guys think by following me on Instagram at that dude McFly, and let us know who you want to see next in the comments below. Let's get into the story. Tyron Frampton was born on December 18, 1994 in the town of Northampton, a town that he had some complicated feelings for. He told The Guardian, Being from a town like Northampton, it's harder for people to leave that behind. Because in some ways it's like you're 10 years behind everyone else. Be it in open-mindedness, culture in general, the English, British, you work all week on a building site, you go to the pub, you have some pub grub with the boys. I'm fed up with that way of life. As a baby, Tyron lived in a community housing project known as Spring Boroughs, an area of the city where he would later stage a photo shoot for the cover's very first album. But back then, he was just an infant, growing up with a half Bayesian mother who had him at 16 and then by the time she was only 24, was married with two more children. She and her family moved to another housing center known as the Lings Estate, where her youngest son, Tyron's half-brother Michael, was born with muscular dystrophy. When Tyron was just eight years old, his baby brother passed away just days after turning a year old. Ty was heartbroken, but his stepdad was hit even harder, taking his son's passing as a sign of divine punishment for his own misdeeds. Ty's stepfather became a Seventh-day Adventist. Before my brother died, my stepdad sat me and my sister down in our room or whatever, because me and my sister shared a room. And he was like, he said, oh, your little brother's he's gonna die. It fucked me up, because I don't know how to, like, you don't ever think, when someone tells you this person's not gonna be here anymore. But in order to finally move past the death himself, Ty had to get a little more proactive. He wrote a letter to his baby brother that said everything in it that he always wished he had a chance to say. He then put a letter in a balloon and let it float up into the sky. 
From that point on, he wasn't nearly as aggressive as he used to be. At the age of 13, Ty moved away from Ling's along with his mother and sister because his stepdad's behavior continued to spiral out of control and he was becoming abusive. Leaving most of his friends behind in the process, the remnants of his family moved into his granddad's home for a bit, but they were all crammed together in one tiny room. They would also sometimes stay at his mom's friend's home where Ty remembers grabbing a microphone for the first time enthralling everyone around him with a rap song on a karaoke machine that ended in a fashion familiar to anyone who has ever watched one of his live shows. He told The Guardian, I just remember everyone being gassed and I was like, yes, standing in my boxes and t-shirt. Nothing changes. When he was a little bit older, he and some of his friends figured out that if you put headphones in a computer's input jack rather than the output, that you could record stuff. So they would record themselves using obscenities. These would turn into some of his first attempts at music, and though he recalls them being trash, he was also having a lot of fun doing it. By the time he was a full-blown teenager, he was bored with school, so he started doing the kind of stuff that he shouldn't to bring in some money. This lasted for a little bit until his mom was forced into attending a compulsory court hearing because his son was just missing so much class. After graduating high school, he went on to study music at Northampton College and met indie kids for the first time who broadened his horizons by introducing him to Radiohead. But gradually, as Ty fell deeper and deeper in love with his music, his friends pulled away to settle into a more typical life. He told The Guardian, I was always like, come on, let's do the music. And they would be like, no, I want to get a mortgage. I'm going to get a job. And I couldn't do that. I couldn't go and put on a smile and be like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I would rather die. I would rather put everything into something and fail a thousand times and have no money then live a life unhappy just to scrape by. Soon after this, he went to London to find himself airplay on radio stations like Rinse FM, but they wouldn't give him the time of day. So he self-released an EP titled BLU, which stands for Better Less Usual, and took to calling himself Slow Tie because that was his nickname as a kid due to his name being Tyler, and the fact that he always spoke really slow. Not a bad nickname, mine was Dumb Bruh. So, so I think he wins. But still, nobody was willing to listen to him yet. He dabbled in a few short stints with other forms of employment, including work and construction, and at a clothing shop called Next before being fired for letting his friends use his discount perks. Let's be real, we've all, we've all done it. It was after this dismissal that he decided to focus his entire efforts on making it in the music industry, and he downloaded a copy of FL Studio to create his own singles and mixtapes. Around 2016, he recorded the track Jiggle, which caught the attention of a few folks in the industry. By the next year, he had partnered up with indie record label Bone Soda to release his EP Slow It Down and I Wish I Knew, which included his breakthrough single Tea and Biscuits, a song he wrote on a park bench directly after getting fired from Next. Well, I kind of got sacked, but at the same time, I quit. And I was walking home, I had my loafers on, and I still was pissing it down the rain, and I walked across this Abington Park. Stepping in all the mud, and it's like waterlogged, so all the water's just coming up into my loafers. And then I was just writing. That's when I wrote Tea and Biscuit. Later that year, he signed a recording contract with Method Records and released his follow-up EP, Runt, in 2018, as well as his debut studio album, Nothing Great About Britain, in 2019 was charted all the way up to number 9 on the official charts the week of its release. A whole bunch of accolades followed, including being named to the BBC Sound of 2019 list, NME's 100 list, and he even found himself nominated for Mercury Music Prize. Then, in February of last year, he won the NME Hero of the Year Award, which was a great moment in his career that suddenly turned into a giant gaffe. Oh my God. Oh my God. Right, she wants me to tend to her flowers. You ain't never had no one play with you like that. You are like the hottest guy I've ever seen. Exactly, so stop playing exactly. with me. I know. I'm so thirsty for your cock. Thank you for the attention. The subsequent social media firestorm was quick and brutal. He was accused of sexism for hitting on host Catherine Ryan by the woke youth. He apologized and sent his award to Ryan, who everyone seemed to think he had offended, despite the fact that she herself tweeted out, he didn't make me feel uncomfortable. That's like giving someone a thousand dollars while they yell out, you didn't rob me. This is not my money. Still, Ty gave up drinking after that incident and he's been doing pretty well with it. 
Even if there's the occasional lapse now and then, he claims that he's the type of drinker who simply can't stop once he's started. He still smokes weed and takes the occasional mushroom trip as part of his recreational adventures too. During this worldwide pandemic, he's created his second studio album, Tyrant, an ambitious album that spans his entire range of emotions, moving between euphoria, loneliness, aggression, and regret. In terms of his future, he's looking forward to trying his hand at comic book writing, much like his Northampton neighbor, Alan Moore. He also wants to make an album titled Life's a Sitcom, with a character for each song. He even has an idea for an album that you can lick and taste. This guy's so creative. In short, Slow Tie wants to build whole worlds, and he's well on his way to accomplishing that feat. As for the rest of the story, well, I think we'll end this video right here. After all, this is Before They're Famous. What do you guys think of the story of Slow Tie? Anything surprise you? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to follow our series on Instagram, Before They're Famous, to vote on who's next. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.